Welcome to a lecture series on linear algebra. In the previous lectures, we have seen the definition of a linear span and we have seen some examples of a linear span. Here, let us start with the problem on linear span. Here, it is, we are asked to consider the vector space R3 over R on the scale. Scalar multiplication and vector addition is not specified, which means we are taking the scalar multiplication and vector addition in the usual sense, right? And we are given with two vectors and we are asked to find out which of the following vectors lies in the span of this set. First, let us try and find what is the span of this set. Given S is the college set consisting of two vectors, right? So let me try to find out the elements in this span. That is going to be of the form alpha times of this vector plus beta times of this vector. And this is going to be what? Alpha plus 3 beta, alpha plus 4 beta, and alpha plus 3 beta. Here you may notice that the first entry and the third entry has to be same, right? So uh, this may be any value based on this uh, beta value this can be anything right whatever may be the value of alpha and beta the first entry and the last entry are going to be same therefore my linear span is going to consist entries of this form right or I may also write on uh, entries of this form where x is same as z and this x y are taken in real because all these are taken from, these vectors are taken from R3 and the scalars are taken from R. We may write this in this form. Let us see here. Okay. In the first option, we have first entry and the last entry is same. So, this has the possibility to be in this span. Okay. Here also, the first entry and the last entry are same. It has the possibility to be in this span. Okay. Here, let us, um, the first entry and the last entry are different. So, it cannot be the case. Right. Let that be. And here also you can see that the first entry and the last entry are different. Okay, here also the first and the last entry are different. So it cannot be in the span. Okay. Here, what we are actually having, we have alpha plus 3 beta is 50 in the first case, and alpha plus 3 beta is 0 in the second case. Right? So if this is so, what is alpha plus 4 beta? It is uh, 50 plus beta that is 70, right? So beta value is going to be 20. So alpha plus 3 beta in the sense 60 which is 50 which means alpha value is minus 10. So when you give alpha as minus 10 and beta as 20, it is satisfying the requirements to be in the span. Therefore, the scalars are at minus 10 and 20. So this is in the span. Okay, here we have evaluated these things just to verify these entries belongs to R if it has to be so, right? It has to be so, so that we can say this entry is present in the linear span. Here what are we getting? We are getting uh, alpha plus 4 beta is 5 which means 0 plus beta is 5. Beta value is 5. When you substitute beta as 5, you will get alpha value to be minus 15. Right? So this is also the alpha and beta values are real values, therefore it is also present in the linear span. Now, uh, we will prove one more result on linear span, that is, whatever may be the set, yes, okay, it has to be some non-empty set, that's it. For any non-empty set taken from the vector space, the linear span is the subspace of that vector space, which means here, we are asked to prove L of S is a vector space, sorry, L of S is a subspace, okay, it is a subspace of V, right, okay, let uh, here this S is any non-empty set, let me take S to be the set consisting of V1, V2 till Vn. Okay, then my L of S is going to consist entries of the form alpha 1 V1 plus alpha 2 V2 until alpha n Vn. Okay, 
here these alpha i these are taken from the field f so this is the case in order to prove some subset as a subspace we should have to check what we have to check whether this condition is getting satisfied or not okay this is what we need to prove in order to prove this uh, let me choose a scalar uh, here i have used this notation also these are just notation so i am taking for lambda and mu from f let me take two entries uh, u comma v in l of s so this u may be alpha 1 v1 alpha 2 v2 plus etc alpha n v n or i may write in a simpler notation that summation i runs from 1 to n alpha i v i okay similarly my v is going to be what summation i runs from 1 to n beta i v i where this alpha i beta i are taken from f Right. Now I have to evaluate this thing. That is lambda u plus mu v. What is it going to be? Here I will have uh, lambda times of alpha one u one plus alpha two sorry v one right v two plus alpha n v n plus mu times of uh, beta one v one plus beta two v two and it goes till beta n vn so i have taken two random elements from l of s and i have evaluated this now i have to prove this is a member of l of s that is sorry l of s this is what we need to prove here right so for which I, what should i do i have to do v1 with some scalar plus v2 with some scalar like that i have to write okay let me do it since scalar multiplication can be taken inside what am i going to get is that lambda times of alpha 1 v1 plus lambda times of alpha 2 v2 and it goes till lambda times of alpha n v n right so here mu times of beta 1 v1 plus mu times of beta 2 v2 and it goes till mu times of beta n v n and here now you may make use of the distribute distributivity and take this lambda alpha 1 plus mu beta 1 together with v1 right lambda alpha 2 plus mu beta 2 with v2 and it goes till what lambda alpha n plus mu beta n times of vn now if i say these entries are taken from the same field f then we may conclude the result okay lambda is taken from where lambda is in f alpha 1 is in f therefore using the closure property of the field we can say that this is a member of f similarly this is taken from f this is also taken from f using the closure property and then multiplication we can say this is in f and this is in f and using the closure property in addition we can say the entire entry is a member of f similarly this is in f and it goes till this so what we have done we have done like uh, let me give uh, together this one let me give another notation delta 1 v1 plus delta 2 v2 plus delta n v n where all these delta are taken from the field f so we have started with two random entries in l of s and finally we proved alpha u plus beta v that this these two can be any scalars that are taken from f right so this is an l of s we have proved it. this proves l of s is a subspace of any vector space right what kind of subspace it is with related to the set yes here this l of s is formed with the help of any non empty set yes right this is any subset of the vector space right l of s was subspace of the vector space okay so this l of s may be contained in s or contains s which one would be true here you can notice that s is a collection of vectors to those collections you are with the help of those collections you are finding all possible linear combinations put that in 
LFS. So, whatever may be the entry that I take in S. Okay, supposing S consists of V1, V2 till Vn. So, the linear combination is going to be what? This thing. Right? So, if I give alpha 1 to be 1 and uh, all other entries to be 0, what would I get? This expression is going to be V1. All those expressions of this form is in L of S. Therefore, your V1 is in L of S. Similarly, you can prove V2 is in L of S. But, the reverse can be possible. You have this in L of S. And can you say all those entries of L of S is a member of S? That cannot be done so. So, this is not the case. S is going to be a subset of L of S. Right? So, uh, do we have any smaller subset of L of S which consists of S? There may be subsets. But do we have any subspaces? No. So, the point that we are trying to say here is L of S is the smallest subspace of the vector space which contains S. Right? So, we have come to the end of this lecture. If you have any queries, you can post it in the comment section. That will be clarified within 24 hours of time. Thank you for watching.